Hey, we're back and this is part two of the rest of the tutorial. So this is, we already have the cycling function set up. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump back into the blueprint first person and go to my array. Looks like I lost my window. And here I'm gonna change the more of the So I'm gonna go up, pull up, and here I'll put the spiny drive, and here, do where, and here will be the airport. What is your address? I am at 35, Charles and May, all again. What time is your departure? So the whole reason this came up was that I was working on a a dialogue, an NPC dialogue, and I just realized for what I was trying to do, it was way too much back and forth. Still wanted to display the conversation. So this conversation could actually go on for like another 20 lines. So I just didn't want to get into an NPC situation on this. So this seemed a faster way to do this. So that's why this is how this whole thing came about. So anyway, we're done there. So the rest of our work is just going to be in the the widget blueprint. And this relates to something I just did on overlays. And so it's kind of fun to be putting that into action. So all we're going to do here is we're just going to come in here and we're going to create an overlay. And as mentioned in the video I just did, the overlay allows you to layer elements on top of each other. And then by, by toggling visibility of those layers, you can have multiple texts take up the same space. So it's very efficient, very cool way to manipulate things. So we're just going to get text one here and drag that into the overlay. And we're going to hit text two and drag that. So this is going to be the first one is going to be our caller. And the second one is going to be our receiver. And hopefully we won't have too many problems with this. So the, it starts off over here. If I click on it over here, I can drag it and set it right above here. And then to differentiate between the color, I can change the color to just, let's say, orange. And here I can change the color to a blue. So that's real nice. So that we have can really distinguish them. And the last thing is they both do need to be variables. So let's make sure they're both set as variables. And I'm not sure about their initial visibility state, so we'll see if that becomes an issue, but I don't think it will be. So now we'll just go into the graph side of everything and we should have everything we need there. Now this is just picking up exactly where we left off in the last tutorial. I just wanted to separate them out because it seemed like two different things almost and this was a little bit more specialized so anyway let's see did i not rename this one let's see so i called this one caller and this one i need to call this receiver so it's clear i will not gosh darn i cannot spell today okay compile and save now we go into the graph okay so this is Shouldn't take too long to do this part of it, but there are uh, quite a few things. So I know for a fact that we're going to want to set visibility. So let's do that. Let's just get those right now set visibility and it's going to be on the widget. So I know we're going to need four of those. So just control D, control D, control D, control D. Let's just get those out of the way. Oops, how many did I make? Too many. But I do know I need a few of those. Okay. And so on the first time, the first time through, I know we're going to want to turn off for, we're going to need the receiver. So we're going to want to, this is what I'm saying. This is like setting up your layers going off and on. So we want the receiver and the caller. And then over here, it's going to be the reverse. It's going to be the caller. And then it's going to be the receiver. And so the first time through, we're going to want one to go off and the second time. So here we go. We're going to go up here right off of where we left off with the set text. And we're going to get the flip-flop node, which I think is, has so much application. This is one of the greatest flow controls they've ever created. So on the first time through, we're going to want to hide our receiver name. So we'll put that in as our target. And it's on visible right now. Let's go ahead and set it to hidden. And then we'll keep our flow control going. And we do want the caller to be visible. So we keep our flow control going and we'll put this in as target. And we want that to be visible. And then we're gonna go ahead and set our 
text. So I'm just realizing something here. We are going to set that. I was going to set that from a variable over here. So let's go back into the first person real fast here. And this makes it instant settable. But let me let me create two variables here. And they're going to be text. And this would be good. Let's see, text. Okay, so let me hit F2 to save this. So this will be the caller name. And then we're going to go ahead. And it's definitely instant settable. And then one more and the receiver name. And we'll make that instance editable and compile and save that. Okay, so, and then let me go ahead and give their input name. So this is gonna be player one, let's say. And here is gonna be Aloha Taxi Service. Okay, and then that's set. Now we can jump over here. Okay, so now I need to get that. So I'll get drag off my blueprint first person here. And I want to, because we're going to set all this. So, And we're not setting it till the end. So let me drag this over here a little bit more. Okay, so coming off of this end, we're going to drag off here now and go set text right here. So this is pretty straightforward, right? We're just setting the text now based off of what we just put in on the blueprint first person. And then it goes in there. Oh, wait, I gotta get it. So get its caller name. Yep, and then plug that in there. Okay, fantastic. And now we're done with that one. So the first time through, it's gonna come in on A and it's gonna turn the receiver to hidden. It's gonna put the caller to visible and we're gonna set it to what we set it in on the first person blueprint character. The second time we hit, we come through, we're gonna do just the opposite. We're gonna turn off the caller visibility. So that's gonna be hidden. And we're gonna keep the chain going and then we're going to turn on the visibility for the receiver. And mind you, they're both in occupying the same space, so this is why we have to do this. So, you know, you can think of in Photoshop where you have your layers and you hit that eyeball. That's basically where we're recreating the same functionality right here. So now we just have the final step is just we just have to get the, the receiver name. Get receiver or just receiver. I can try type in receiver. This one. And then we just need to set it. So I can drag off here and set text. Set text. Then we're gonna drag it off of, not there. We gotta drag it off of here. Set text. And then we just pop this one in here. And this one goes in here. Let me just double click on this, that all the way. And as far as I know, that should work. Let me just double check. Receiver, caller, set, hidden, visible. It's just the reverse. These are just the reverse of each other. And set receiver, set caller. That looks right. Okay, so let's see if this works. So we'll come in here, we'll hit play. There's player one, I come in and I go one. Aloha taxi service, hola. Player one, I need a ride. Aloha taxi service. Hold on. Why is my not my color changing? Did I not set it here? Receiver. Oh, I thought I changed it. So let's go. Okay. Compile. Save. Okay, let's check it out. So now we come over. Player one. Aloha taxi. Hola. <laughs> Player one, I need a ride. To where? The airport. What is your address? I'm at 35 Carlton Way, the Holiday Inn. What is your departure time? <laughs> Eight o'clock. And then it just cycles through. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you can find some use of this functionality. So take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.